Thank you for that introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I would like to thank you for this opportunity to speak of its first of its kind event. My name is Chris Mittendorf, and I'm the new international relations specialist for FDA's India office. I was previously a pharmaceutical investigator with FDA's China office. Many of you may have interacted with me during inspections or GMP workshops. To my Chinese colleagues, I say ni hao and zhao zheng hao. FDA's in the office, like the China office, is part of OGPS, the Office of Global Policy and Strategy. This is our mission statement. Effectively advances globally the FDA's mission of protecting and promoting the public health of Americans. We do this in part by interactions with the government of India, outreach to stakeholders, and conducting inspections. We also maintain awareness of emerging issues in India and communicate those findings to appropriate offices of the FDA. And we have a line of communications with CDSCO, other government of India agencies, and with the state of authorities within India. These are the global strategic priorities of FDA. Organizational excellence, which is more of an internal activity. FDA policy coherence, creating and strengthening global partnerships and facilitating information sharing with internal and extern external stake stakeholders. Some general facts about pharmaceuticals in India and why FDA feels a strong collaboration with the government of India, stakeholders and industry is key to ensuring a safe and reliable supply chain. India has the largest number of FDA registered drug manufacturing facilities outside the US and is one of the largest exporters, especially of generics to the US with many of the APIs used in India imported from China. On the map, we can see the shaded areas and the concentration of manufacturers within India. About 74% of all FDA registered pharmaceutical facilities in India are in the Indian states of Maharashtra, Gujarat, Telaganda, Adhra Pradesh, and Karnataka. As expected, these states are also the five states with the highest number of FDA inspections. When I was developing this presentation, I considered inserting some compliance uh, and inspection trends and application data. However, since we've heard about applications and the topic following mine is about the state of GMP inspections, I thought adding information um, like this would be redundant and there are far better speakers on the topic than myself. So what I want to do is highlight the uniqueness of the India office and hopefully provide a better understanding of the activities we perform and provide information that you may find useful as you navigate FDA's drug regulations. As I previously stated, we have a relationship with the central government and states. Previously, the US and government of India, I abbreviate here as GOI, we're working with a statement of intent. On February 24th of this year, the US and the government of India moved from a statement of intent to a memorandum of understanding on the safety of medical products intended to develop and strengthen opportunities for cooperative engagements in regulatory, scientific and technical matters and public health protections related to the medical products the US and government of India regulates. The key activities within this MOU include, but are not limited to, information sharing, such as the lack of adherence of GMPs by manufacturers in the participants' countries, and information on science-based regulatory decision-making. Observed inspections, which is exactly as it sounds, uh, we observe each other's inspections. Uh, collaborations with other entities uh, in an effort to ensure the safety, effectiveness, and security of medical products. Uh, we intend to engage and support collaboration between agencies, uh, state and local authorities, industry and other non-government organizations and meetings and other. I want to share uh, an example of a collaboration and joint regulatory effort in response to false and misleading claims related to the treatment of COVID-19. Um, FDA and the American Federal Trade Commission, which regulates advertising, among other activities in the US, identified firms promoting, and this was usually via social media and online marketplaces, 
they were promoting false and misleading claims related to the treatment of COVID-19. So FDA is, uh, notifies these uh, firms uh, and subsequently issues a warning letter. And as part of our collaborative effort um, of information sharing, we notified the Indian uh, Ministry of Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Unani, Siddhartha, uh, and Homeopathy, which we call Ayush uh, for short. Uh, and I apologize if I didn't pronounce those words correctly. Um, as many of my Chinese colleagues can attest, my foreign language skills are not very good. So anyway, going forward, uh, and so Ayush, uh, which uh, regulates Ayush therapies in India, ordered the firms to cease prohibited acts and ordered a stop to all publicity and advertising of Ayush-related claims for COVID-19 treatment. Uh, additionally, they also verified that the firms who received a warning letter from FDA removed the prohibited material from their websites. And I think that is just a great collaboration. And, and the reason I chose it is because it's topical. We're, we're all very familiar with COVID-19. And I think it's just a great uh, example of working together. So uh, we have uh, information sharing with the government um, of India. Um, and so, but we also have a, a mailing list in our office. Uh, we usually add names and emails from the business cards we receive. Uh, we hope to improve this activity by implementing a listserv where it's easy for interested parties to opt in, update their email, should they move or change job. But for now, it's just a mailing list. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can send an email um, uh, to, the, to the address on the screen and we can add you to the list. Uh, it's not limited to industry, government employees and other organizations can also sign up. We try to be selective in what we send out. We don't want to turn what we feel is a valuable tool into a spam bot. Recently, we used the mailing list to provide our stakeholders with information from FDA's uh, regulation guidances and other activities related to COVID-19. Uh, FDA has a dedicated website, uh, which you can access via the link on this slide. I'll bring it up, there we go. Um, and I've included it. Uh, so, what we in the, in the office did was the, we distilled what we thought because um, we are in country and have a close relationship to our stakeholders was useful information related to COVID-19. Um, uh, and, and again, from that mailing list, we used some of the questions we received in our mailbox as a reference to ensure we were sending the information our stakeholders wanted and could use. And so if you want to sign up, there it is again. Um, uh, it, it, it's right there, USF, uh, USFDA, INO. Uh, INO is an abbreviation uh, internally for India office. So our communication, like I just said, is not limited to discussion and information sharing with just the government of India. Uh, even before uh, the MOU, FDA participated in regulatory forums uh, with other regulators, um, uh, with the GOI, with EMA, et cetera. Uh, and attended workshops and conferences. Uh, again, INO means uh, India office. Uh, an example of an emergency issue, which we are probably all familiar with, um, and no, it's not COVID, uh, is the presence of nitrosamines in certain APIs. Uh, last November, um, we had a multinational collaboration with the government of India and other regulatory authorities and facilitated a GMP workshop. Uh, and this was with industry also, this is just was not regulators talking. Uh, so manufacturers could learn what was expected, get the latest information, and hopefully assist them in minimizing the risk to products uh, and patients. Uh, it's not limited to, to emerging issues. Uh, we get quite a few requests through that mailbox to speak, and we also attend other conferences throughout the year. Uh, for example, we have um, the, the ISPE uh, conference uh, in September of last year, and then in this year again, before all the quarantine and everything, there was the uh, in India Pharmaceutical Forum uh, in Mumbai uh, back in February. Uh, so we want to hear from you. Um, uh, yes, uh, this session includes a Q&A, but this is really more for questions that you may have outside of these presentations. As I stated earlier, we have a mailing list and we want to hear from you. We have contacts within FDA and we can reach out and get uh, gen answers on general questions such as registrations, um, like we had a lot about uh, they wanted to market hand sanitizers, how to register with FDA, what we're doing in COVID, especially what we are doing in lieu of personal inspections. 
and many other types of inquiries. Again, there's our mailbox address. Uh, we will do our best to answer your questions in a timely manner. Thank you for your time. Um, I hope I provided some information that you find is useful um, in understanding what we're doing, FDA is doing in India beyond inspections. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Raphael, and he's gonna give us a talk on the uh, quality, um, uh, state, state of pharmaceutical quality regarding surveillance inspections. And then up to him is uh, Mr. Lee. He's gonna talk about advanced manufacturing and uh, some of the challenges and maybe that'll help you uh, by providing insight into what FDA is thinking about how best to do that. Uh, again, thank you for your time. I'll be back later to participate in a panel discussion and answer some questions. Uh, up next is uh, Raphael.